Welcome, folks, one and all, to Let's Play Ultima 1 The First Age of Darkness. Originally released in 1981 for Apple II computers, this version that I'm playing is the 1987 DOS remake. Developed by Richard Garriott and published on the DOS version by Origin Systems, Ultima 1 is a role-playing game where we take on the first threat that the stranger, who would later become the Avatar, faces in the world of Sosaria, that would later become Britannia. For Sosaria is being plagued by an evil sorcerer known as Mondane, a man who seemingly is immortal, and has a large horde of monsters at his disposal that are destroying the kingdoms and ruining the lands. It is only by the stranger's appearance, a mysterious person that seems to hail from an unknown place, that Sosaria has any hope of survival. Ultima 1 is very different from the other Ultima games that I've played, mainly due to the fact that it was originally made in 1981, and as such is rather primitive by the standards of the other Ultima games that I've played. However, I feel that if I'm going to play any of the Ultima games, I'm going to start from the very beginning. Ultima 1, from darkest dungeons to deepest space. Already, you may be noticing a slight tonal difference in this game as opposed to the other ones that I've played, and that is because Ultima 1 has a smattering of all manner of things in it. But we can't see any of those things until we go and create a new character, for if we try to continue a previous game, we are informed that there are no Ultima 1 characters saved on this disc. Press return to generate a character or escape to return to the main menu. We're going to press return and generate a character. We have 30 points to distribute between six stats, and each of these stats is important for something. We shall start at the bottom for no particular reason. Intelligence determines how cheaply you can buy various things. Wisdom determines how often your spells fail if you cast spells, unless you're a cleric, whereupon you don't worry about wisdom ironically enough because your spells never fail. Charisma determines how much you can sell things for. Stamina you'd think would determine your health, but it doesn't. It only determines how likely you are to get drunk when you're drinking in a tavern. Agility determines your ability to hit, and it also has things to do with your evasion and your ability to steal, but those two are relatively minor. And strength determines how much damage you deal in addition to the damage of your weapon. We are going to be a warrior type, so we're going to improve our strength quite a lot. The maximum I believe you can put any stat at the start is 25, so we're going to put uh, strength at 20, we're also going to put uh, agility at 20, in fact we'll increase strength to 25, why not? And we're going to put a tiny little bit into stamina just so that we can drink a tiny little bit of the taverns, so that we can discover things as we drink. Let's move on. We need to press spacebar when finished. We select thy race, for indeed you can pick one of any four of these races. A human, an elf, a dwarf, and a bobbit. I have no idea what a bobbit is. I imagine it's a play on the word hobbit, but we're going to select human. We are also going to be a male human. You can see that our stats have changed a little because we selected human. We're going to be male, and we're going to be a fighter, which improves our strength and agility somewhat. And we're going to enter thy name. Of course, we are going to be Kikoskia, continuing the trend of having the stranger, who later becomes the Avatar, called Kikoskia, for this game does fit into the timeline of the whole saga. Things that happen here do have an impact on later games. Most tellingly, they have impacts on Ultima 2 and 3, but you do feel the uh, consequences of the events that happen here, even in games as far as Ultima 5. By pressing return, do we wish to save this character? We don't have to save this character, but considering that there is no uh, stat rolling, you won't be able to generate a character that has better stats than this. And so, by saving this character, this character is now in the Continue Previous Game section. We can't start a new game per se, we have to continue a game that we've previously started, even though we haven't actually started this game. We're going to continue a previous game, 
And there are four options. We can only have four saves at any one time. And each of these saves is for an individual character. I cannot have four separate saves for Kikoskia. And so, I'm going to have to be very careful with how I play. Type number of character you wish to use in Ultima 1. Press escape to go to the main menu. You may notice that there is no music playing. Ultima 1, in the MS-DOS version at least, I can't speak for the Apple II version, is entirely devoid of music, though it does have sound effects. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to enter into the world of Cesaria by pressing 1. Please wait whilst thy game loads. And you always start in exactly the same place. You can see almost everything that you're going to be looking at throughout the whole game here. We have the main window, which shows what we can see. We have a, a section at the bottom left, which allows us to enter in our commands, and also to see the consequences of our actions. And on the bottom right, we have the four most important stats in the game. Starting with hit points, which you always start with 150. Food, which you start with quite a lot, 200. Both of those are going to go down very quickly. Experience, which starts at zero, that is going to go up quite quickly. We want to reach a certain number of experience before we uh, can complete the game. And coins, which are pennies. We currently have 100, and 100 is not a lot of money at all. We can't buy very much with that. We do start with equipment, and we also start with an objective, and that, though we don't know it yet, is to defeat Mondane. There are, by the way, a lot of commands. So many commands in this game that I have a reference file to the right here, which tells me everything that I can do. Pretty much nearly every single key on the keyboard is dedicated to some kind of command, if it's a letter, that is. And some of them don't make as much sense as you'd think they would, but they all have their place. Right now, time is paused. Until I actually decide to do something, nothing is going to happen. Though if I want to, I can press the spacebar and let time pass, which I really don't want to do. Doing that would mean that time just goes by, enemies might move, and food will be consumed. One thing to note before I end the video here, besides the fact that this video is going to have no actual gameplay in it, this video was primarily for generating the character that we're going to be, and explaining a little bit about the game, and about what we're going to be doing. The main thing I want to mention here is that if you press any button that is not an accepted command that you can do, you get an error, which is... Huh? What the her does is it actually consumes a unit of time. And so, when we come back, folks, the stranger will begin to explore in the lands of Cesaria. Will he be able to best Mundane? Will he be able to save the people that live here? And just how many people is he going to have to kill so that he can do this? The answer is a lot, because we need a lot of experience, and we need a lot of money to be able to keep gaining experience. Money is almost as important as food and hit points here. Oh, one more thing I want to mention is I've barely played this game before, beyond creating a character and walking around the overworld a couple of times many years ago. But I have done a tiny bit of research into what I do need to do, but I haven't researched too far. Mainly, I've tried to make sure that I'm familiar with the mechanics of the game over knowing what I need to do to complete the game. And so... This is going to be a relatively blind playthrough. There are going to be things that I will not expect, things that I will not know what to do, and enemies that I will have no idea how to defeat beyond pressing the attack button and aiming in a particular direction. It'll all be a mystery that will be solved in time, as the stranger explores Cesaria. And though it looks like we're armed with a sword and shield, we are not armed with a sword and shield right now. That is just a generic sprite. And so... I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later.